Understanding the different classifications of flies can be confusing and frustrating, especially to a beginner. We're going to try to clarify this by breaking flies down into five basic groups and then dividing them even further into two subgroups. The five basic groups of flies are dry flies, wet flies and nymphs, streamers, bass flies, which can include pike flies and other large game fish flies, and saltwater flies. Now we can divide these down further into two subgroups, attractor type flies, which don't really imitate anything found in nature, but just look like something good to eat to the fish, and realistic type imitations, which exactly imitate the food source that they're designed to. Our first category of flies is a dry fly. And a dry fly, true to its name, is a fly that rides on the surface of the water. Dry flies usually have some mechanism, like this fly has a hackle, which is a chicken feather wound around it, or a stiff tail, or it may be made of a buoyant type material to help it float on the surface. Dry flies are usually imitating the adult form of an aquatic insect. The term wet fly can really be used to identify any fly that is fished below the surface. But today, technically, we separate the traditional English wet flies from today's modern nymphs. Years ago, the English fished these wet flies that had tails and had wings folded back over their body and some type of beards which imitated legs and they thought they were fishing drowned adult insects, when actually we come to find out that they are probably imitating emerging aquatic insects. This wing laid back over the body imitates the wing as it's popping out of the nymphal shuck. So traditional English wet flies really are probably imitating emerging aquatic insects. We use the term nymph to describe any fly that rides at or near the bottom and imitates the immature form of an aquatic insect. Now that can either be a mayfly nymph or a stonefly nymph or a caddis larva or a midge larva. The caddis larva and the midge larva have no tails and they're grub-like creatures with a green, brownish or reddish body and a darker head. A mayfly or stonefly nymph will have tails and a body and some form of wing case where their adult wings are forming underneath. A streamer is a fly that imitates a bait fish, like this clouser minnow or this famous woolly bugger or the muddler minnow. Keep in mind that all fish eat other fish. And most fish eat other fish one-third their body size on a regular basis. So although that fly may look big to you, that'll catch a fish that big on a regular basis. Streamers are very, very successful. When in doubt, pull out a streamer. You probably won't go wrong. Bass and panfish flies are really a lot of fun. Not nearly as technical as what we use for trout and some smallmouth fishing. In fact, most of them don't look like anything found in nature, like this sneaky peat. This is a slider which floats on the surface, but when I strip it, it dives down below and will come back up. I also fish lots of poppers, which has a cupped face to it that when I strip it, it sprays a lot of water and creates a popping sound. Again, this really doesn't imitate anything found in nature. Although we will imitate things like frogs, bait fish, this particular one imitates a, a sunfish or a bluegill, or snakes or aquatic worms. We will even imitate damselflies and dragonflies which bass and panfish will often eat. But for the most part, 
bass flies or attractor type flies. Saltwater flies are fairly simple also, although a lot can be very complex in design. Saltwater game fish primarily eat three things. They eat other fish, they eat shrimp, and they eat crabs. With a few exceptions, going saltwater fishing, you can have some examples of those three food sources in your box and be successful. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.